Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters, and welcome to the Sabbath day, and let it be blessed for you and a happy day for you. As we come to take the sacrament, we ask that you prepare your emblems ready. Kyle would like to invite the Spirit to be with us today, so if you will pray with, with us. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask thee truly that thy presence will be with us this day, not only with us but also all our brothers and sisters throughout the world. And we also think of our brothers and sisters that are facing persecution and hatred in certain parts of this world. We ask that the Spirit be with us here today and with all our brothers and sisters in England and throughout America and the world. We pray this and ask this in the name of our Saviour Most High, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Brother Carl. On this day, the 3rd of February, 9, uh, 2024. I don't know where we got 19 from, but... So we're at the home of Brother Kyle. And it's really a blessing to be here today. The weather's not too good. It's it's raining a bit, so but it could be worse. The candles, brilliant. yeah, we've lit the candle for peace, and uh, we just think of people that are suffering due to war today. So as we prepare for the sacrament, uh, shall I read the bread? Mm -hmm. At this time. We welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to His mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ, as individuals and as a community, worshipping Jesus Christ through God's Word, the sacraments, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. Uh, if you'd like, if you've got your emblems ready, and if you'd like to bow or knee, whatever's best for you. So let us start off with the prayer for the bread. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to all the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of thy body of thy Son, and witness unto thee, O God the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments which he have given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. Amen. So Carl is now going to uh, do the prayer for the wine. So if you'd like to bow or kneel, whichever preference is okay for you. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee, in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they might do it in remembrance of the blood of thy Son which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Shalom, brothers and sisters. I want to focus on King Benjamin's address. It's one of my favorite scriptures, not only in the Book of Mormon, just in general. And not only King Benjamin's address, but more specifically, the portion found in Chapter 2 of the RAV, which is the Community of Christ edition of the Book of Mormon. Chapter 4 of the OPV, which is the Salt Lake City Church's edition. And starting in verse 30 for chapter 2, verse 17 for chapter, verse 17 for chapter 4. Perhaps thou shalt say the man has brought upon himself his misery. Therefore I will stay my hand and not give unto him of my food, nor impart unto him of my substance. For his punishments are just. But I say unto you, O man, whoever doeth this, the same hath great cause to repent. And except he repent of that which he hath done, he perisheth forever, and hath no interest in the kingdom of God. No interest. Keep that in mind. For behold, are we not all beggars? Do we not all depend on the same being, even God, for all substance which we have, both food and raiment, for gold and silver, for all the riches we have every kind? And behold, even at this time, ye have been calling on his name and begging for a remission of your sins. And he has suffered, and has he suffered, that ye have begged in vain? Nay, he has poured his spirit out upon you. So, what he's saying here is, if you see someone that in need, and you say, oh, I'm not going to help them because they put themselves in this situation, then we're, he's comparing that to us spiritually. When we come to Christ and say, I've done bad things. I want to atone for my sins. I want to be a good person. I want to change. God doesn't say, no, you've, you've earned what you where you're at. This is justice for you. You're going to spend eternity in hell. So what's the difference? Are we better than God by telling people that, oh, nope, I'm not going to help you. You've, you've gotten yourself into the situation. Get yourself out of it. So why is it so important? Why does it say that the people that do this have no interest in the kingdom of God? Well, think about it. If all you're really concerned about, I should say if all someone is really concerned about, is protecting themselves. I'm okay. I have what I need. I'm spiritually saved. I have a roof over my head. I have food on my table. I have money in the bank. Everyone else gets what they deserve because I got here on my own. I worked hard. That's denying the atonement of Jesus Christ because no one gets where they are alone. No one. I don't care if you literally are living on an island. If things are going well for you, that's because the Lord blessed you with good weather, good crops, good everything that you needed. And that's not to say that God curses bad people because we know wicked people who are doing well in worldly things. So if God is willing to give us his mercy to grant us the atonement, to save us, and to bring good things into our lives. If we are denying people the same on our own level, obviously we can't atone for other people's sins, but if we're not willing to do what, what we can do on our level, then we clearly don't have any real interest in heaven. Because in heaven, we're all one. We're, we're you know, Deuteronomy. 6.4 says that God is unity. God is united. God is one. So, therefore, we must be one. We must love one another. And I would say this extends to everything. Matthew 5, 1 through 7 talks about not judging people. And I know that some Latter-day Saints like to point to the Joseph Smith translation where he adds that you can judge in righteous judgment. So then, what is righteous judgment? Well, we can't contradict what King Benjamin saying here, this was so important that it was put in the Book of Mormon, which is the restor restoration of the gospel, right? So, if this is what's needed then to understand the Bible, even if it's Joseph Smith's translation, we have to understand that the righteous judgment is when we judge ourselves, not in a bad way. We're not supposed to be, you know, whipping ourselves or putting ourselves down, but we should always be striving to find our true selves through the atonement of Jesus Christ and growing in his grace. And we have to understand that everyone's doing that at their own level. And that homeless person that may seem like they are there because of some sort of terrible thing that they did. Well, there's something in each of our lives that's terrible that we did. Because every sin is a blemish to God, right? 
But if the atonement can save the people that we see as beneath us, then we can save those people too. We can reach out a hand and we can help people. And I know this is a very controversial topic. I know that, that it, some people are going to claim that this is politically charged because we've been culturally trained not to help anybody and to only save ourselves. It used to be the boat sinking, get the women and children out first. And now it's get for me and take for mine. And that's not a Christ-like point of view. And that's why I love King Benjamin's Address so much. Because it is just the very definition in my mind of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Love one another. Take care of one another. As the king, he's passing this as a law. But the reality is that you can't legislate kindness. And we see this over and over again in the Book of Mormon. Every time they obey the laws that King Benjamin established, they prosper. But once they start saying, oh no, I earned this. I'm keeping it for myself. I'm not going to help anybody else. What happens? They start to fail. And it's not just that the Lamanites are sent to attack them. They start to fail economically because they have poverty in their midst. So, my thought for you today is, how can you love a little more? How can you be a little kinder? How can you give a little more? Because this life really is just a blink of an eye. We're not here to focus on the bad things that we or anybody else do. We've existed for all eternity. Now we're here. And afterwards, we're going to exist for all eternity. We're going to be everything that we've always been. And what we do now is merely an opportunity for us to see for ourselves with the veil between us and God who we truly are. So my question for you today is, who are you? Because if you are a Christian, then I believe your eternal view from before you came here and after you came here and the view you're trying to get to here is exactly what's being taught here in King Benjamin's Address. Love others as we have been loved. Not by others, but by God. It's the light of Christ that's supposed to shine through us to repair the world. Then be a little kinder. Love a little more. Give a little more. I like to say, don't just do what you can, do what you must. Because doing what you can may not hurt a little, but doing what you must will. And if Christ suffered on this cross for me, then I can suffer a little for him. I leave this thought with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. So we've got Beam Still this week uh, where people can come along from the community and enjoy hot drinks and uh, uh, beans on toast. So this is done through Community of Christ. Um, we've also got, and I must remember this, on Thursday night the prayer meeting with David and Brent. And uh, if you'd like to know more about... Uh, Church of Jesus Christ in Christian Fellowship. Just look up the um, the way, the email or webmail address on screen above us, and uh, I'm going to say a closing prayer and, and a prayer for the week. So let us pray. Loving Creator God, we thank you for this day, and we thank you that your Spirit has been with us and knows every one of us, Lord. And we ask that you guide us as we go through our week. As we come in contact with people, you will help us, and through us they can see you. So, Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your gift to us, Jesus Christ. And I say these things in his name. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. His peace be with you. Shalom. Shalom.